This is Roseanne. She's famous for having a TV show back in the 90s with John Goodman, self-titled. I think the name of it was Roseanne. She's gone completely off the deep end. Okay, She is a far-right nutter butter who has found herself sitting on Alex Jones's set. She's doing an interview with Alex Jones, dead serious. This is actually part two. If you haven't seen the other, don't sweat it. This stands independently of the rest. I'll provide context if it's missing. She claims to be Jewish. I'm not convinced because this is a Saturday when this is happening, when this interview is taking place. It's the Sabbath. She said it earlier. And if she really is Jewish, she's breaking a ton of rules. She, she also gets really anti-Semitic pretty soon. So let's listen and see what she had to say in this interview with Alex Jones. It's bound to get nutty. And while we do, we're going to play some Breath of the Wild. I just completed the first Divine Beast. When these people who profess themselves to be Jews but are actually anti-Jews, I really want to talk about that too. You got the floor. Boom. Tell us. Well, when Moses was leading the children of Israel, according to uh Genesis, I mean, Exodus, when he was taking them out, you know, God told them, don't take out this certain class of people that serve Pharaoh. They were the black magicians and lawyers and servants. They Okay, I don't know what she's talking about here, but Moses wasn't even a real person. The Exodus through Egypt didn't actually happen. All of that was completely made up. But okay. I mean, Israel was like a week's walk from where they were in Egypt. A week, okay? It took them 40 years to get there, really? It's just a ridiculous story all the way around. Plus, there's no historical evidence for any of it taking place. So anyway, let's keep listening here. For the lawyer class, the uh, judges and such, they, they were the servant class, as we call them. Like I Did Egypt have lawyers and judges? They didn't even have wheels, okay? I'm not convinced they even had judges. Maybe they did, and I'm just, like, not familiar. Yes, politicians like we have right now, uh, and they were Jewish. The managerial uh, class for the elite. Yes, and uh, there, there's a name that God gave them, and it was Erev Rav, which means good teachers of bad information. So... The Jews and the lawyers and the judges were good teachers of bad information, is what she's saying. Like, again, this is all completely made up, but holy shit, dude, this is crazy. When you break it down, that's my... That's probably said. They're smart, they're, they're good teachers, but they teach bad. That's my interpretation. Good teachers of bad information and bad... It's my interpretation. Oh, okay. So this isn't a widely accepted interpretation by like a lot of people, by, you know, scientists or historians or whatever. I don't even know what she's talking about for that matter. This is just her interpretation of what this thing means. Bad information is that which leads the human beings to death. They did not have wheels in Egypt. They had sleds in ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt, like when the pyramids were being built, Wheels did not exist. They had to bring the stones in on big sleds. If you're reading the Bible and you read it talking about chariot wheels and going through the Red Sea and all that, of course, you'll assume that they had wheels and stuff. I don't believe that they had wheels. I'm willing to be proven wrong on this. Yeah, prove me wrong, em uh, Emily Neptune. I want to know if I'm correct on this. I'm pretty confident they did not have wheels. If they did, I will insert a correction. And bad information is that which leads the human beings to death, right? Which leads you to, which bullshits you to go on the trains and into the showers. And that's what that's the globalists bad. can't help. Everything they do hurts people. Everything they teach is bad. They know the knowledge. They know how to empower people. Why would you? Wow, you catch that bit about trains and stuff like that, that this is what convinces people to get on the trains or whatever? They are convinced that the left is like Hitler. This is crazy, right? This is nuts. Okay. In ancient Egypt, according to Emily Neptune, the wheel was known since the 5th dynasty, about 60 wagons with 4 to 8 wheels, and only a few two-wheeled carts are attested. The first wheels appear on the scaling ladder and a siege tower in military context. Interesting. So were wheels invented in Egypt? 
or is that what it was? It sounds like they had wheels, but later, is that right? Like they didn't start out with them or? All right, let's step back. Evidence indicates that Egyptians made use of potter's wheels in manufacturing a pot. pot well, pottery, potter's wheels are different. Chariots, however, are only believed to have been introduced by the invasion of the Hyksos in the second intermediate period, 1650 BC to 1550 BC, during the New Kingdom era. Chariotry became central to Egypt's military. Okay, so the Bible was supposedly written um, 5,000 years ago, although it wasn't actually. Didn't cave people invent the wheel? No. No, no. The wheel is much newer than that. Pyramids were built in the fourth dynasty. So they did bring the pyramid stones in on sleds, not with wheels. But they had wheels later, is what it sounds like. They had wheels after the fact. The Bible was actually written about 3,500 years ago to 4,000 years. Yeah, 3,500 to 4,000 years ago, give or take. Let's. How old is the wheel? Okay, the wheel was really invented around 1900 BC, give or take. When was the Bible written? 13th century BC. -E. So apparently the Bible, the events of the story of Exodus supposedly took place in 1300 BCE, I believe. So roughly 3,300 years ago. The wheel was first kind of hollowed out into something that resembles what we now know as a wheel 4,000 years ago versus the 3,300 years ago the Bible was written. So it sounds like they were kind of working on the wheel during the events of the book of Exodus, and they may have even, they may have invented it by then. They may have put it into use by then, but the pyramids, they, when they were building pyramids, they did not have the wheel. Apparently, they were bringing them in on sleds at that point, so now we know. Sounds like that's the correct answer. Wheels get bogged down in, in the sand. That would check out. Chariots are thought to have been first used as a weapon in Egypt by the Hyksos in the 16th century BCE. So, 1600. So, um, let's see, we're in the year 2023 now. So, you you're basically going backwards. So that's about 3,600 years ago, give or take. 3,600 years ago. By the time the events in the Bible were taking place, it sounds like they probably had wheels but they were not terribly widespread yet, and they were a reasonably new invention. When the pyramids were being built, which was thousands of years before the events of the Bible were taking place, I believe, the wheel had, it still had not been invented yet. So anyway, let's, let's keep listening to these guys. Information and bad information is that which leads the human beings to death, right? Which leads you to, which bullshits you to go on the trains and into the showers. And that's what that's the globalists bad. can't help. Everything they do hurts people. Everything they teach is bad. They know the knowledge. They know how to empower people. Why would you want to hurt people unless... This is vile, dude. They're, they're trying to convince everybody that the left is trying to, like, put people in, like, chambers and on trains. This is just fucking wrong. This is straight up fucking wrong. Alien force... Satan is, is wants to hurt us because we're made in the image of God. He's jealous of us. Bingo. Satan is jealous of us because we're made in the image of God. Because, you know, Satan wasn't made in the image of God as an angel. But okay. But I, I wrote this book called Rosanarchy and... and uh... What a name. Actually, I'm a, I'm a fan of that name. I like that. I like that a lot. That's a great name, right? You know, of course, nobody bought it even though I went on Oprah and sucked her ass. They had only sold 5,000 copies. Well, we'll get, we'll, we'll sell 50,000 copies. Well, anyway. Wow, dude, she sold 5,000 copies and she's upset by that. How much is that, dude? If I sold 5,000 copies of a book, I'd be ecstatic, dude. Holy shit. I'd be jumping for fucking joy if I sold 5,000 copies. I mean, when you are, it, it, how much you make from book sales kind of depends on the deal you get from people right who are the publishers or whatever i think if you're just like if you go through the traditional methods of publishing a book 
I think you get like 18 to 20 percent of it, which means you write the book, you hand it off and they do everything else, including editing and stuff. But if you self publish and do the editing yourself and everything else, you'll probably make somewhere around 70 percent. So she sells 5,000 copies, right? Presumably she hired an editor and all of that stuff. So she probably made, say, 25%. And let's say she charged 20 bucks for it. That's $25,000 that she made off the book. I guess I can see her feeling like that's not very much money. <laughs> but uh, that's like a life-changing amount of money for most people. $25,000, dude. I would be absolutely over the moon if I sold 5,000 copies of something. But going on Oprah and then falling flat on your face with book sales probably t should tell you something about how the book is. Complete garbage. Was Thanks, Alex. I appreciate your support. I try really hard to... Uh, I wrote that book to help deprogram kids from the Harry Potter bullshit. Oh my God, dude. But anyway, because my grandson was into that. But anyways, at the end, I wrote this chapter called The End, wherein I kill Satan. And I tell you how to do it. Okay, now we have entered La La Land officially. This is not just vile, but fucking insane. Unhinged from reality now, officially. Roseanne says her book, Roseanne Archie, explains how to kill Satan. That is nuts, dude. That is nuts. Go on. And I'll just give you the, at the end. How you do it is when you feel empathy, he can't be there because he hates that. That's you what Christ did. Him. Exactly. Whatever. Exactly. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Explain it. I'm interrupting. Explain it. No, you explain it. No, you. I need to shut up. You're dead on. Because my enemies, I've learned, as soon as I just forgive them, I still oppose them, but I don't hate them. I feel sorry for them. It deactivates them. That is exactly right, and that is what Christ taught. He taught a bunch of stuff, and I, I, I'm going to start teaching. Jesus taught a bunch of stuff, you say? Knock me over with a feather. What he taught uh, because I, I believe the time is right. And here's what I think I wanted to say. What I think is happening, while they put us in the quarantine, what happened, we got closer with our family. They can't defeat us. Everything they come up with. Roseanne Arkey, wow. Dispatches from the Nut Farm. This is best-selling author and television star. Well, I think she's using best-selling author a little liberally there, but okay. Four ninety nine on Kindle. Wow, that's just crazy, dude. That is just crazy. I got to download a, a uh, what do you call it, like a, a sample of this, right? Oh, God, it's in audiobook format, too. That's crazy. 2011 is when it came out. It, it, it's in hardcover, and it looks like there are a number of different, like, covers for it. But Roseanne, My Life as a Woman, 1990. That's another book she wrote. What the hell? Roseanne, My Life as a Woman. What a book title, dude. Paperback is $1.30. Oh, God, this is crazy. Yeah, I I'm not seeing Roseanne Arky on Amazon or on Kindle or anything. Let me try going straight to the uh, Kindle cloud reader. Or let's see. Yeah, I I'm not. Actually, I can't. Yeah, that's it. I'm not. This isn't on Amazon anymore, I don't think. I think they yanked it. I don't even know where I would look for this. Just crazy, dude. This This person has real problems. It's just nuts. To us, it can't work because we're connected. Like we go and plug our soul into the wall socket. They can't do nothing about it. Whatever they devise for us, it can't defeat us. because. Dude, she needs mental help desperately, really. She needs mental health. Or she needs mental help now, like yesterday, honestly. We have souls and because we can jack into God anytime That's we right. want. Anytime and we're always there. I jack into your mom. So they cannot defeat us. So whatever they're going to dream up for us next, it ain't going to work. If they got a machine, that's going to, if they got bombs, none of that's going to work because you know why? We are, we are praying that it all fails, that it can't work, that it's mechanical, anything created by their minds and their hands for the, for the express purpose of hurting any more children on this planet. It ain't going to work. No. What is she even talking about? I am so lost. Up informed against us, she'll prosper.
That is exactly right. And, and may it all just blink off. Well, may what blink off? What is she even referring to? They can feel that they lost before. So Satan wants to claw us down to the pit with him. And so that's where, I mean, we see it. And the enemy knows they've lost. They're trying to take as many with us as they can. How do we reach out? Because, you know, the lost sheep, it's great. A lot of folks are awake. I think their main job is to be waking up others. But when people are already turned over to evil, when do you give up? Like, how do you decide? I'm going to try to wake this person up, but this person's too far gone. Or you try to wake them all up, or what do you do? Here's what you got to know. Where's our effing booze? I got exactly what you want right here. <laughs> Ow! Because you said on this Jewish holiday, people are supposed to drink, right? Yeah. Right, exactly. On this Jewish holiday, people aren't supposed to drink. Is that right? She's not Jewish, right? She, there's no way in hell she's Jewish. I think she's completely full of it. Claims to be Jewish, comes to a, a studio to give an interview, which is working in, you know, within the Jewish religion. This would be considered working, all of this. Shows up to this studio to work on the Sabbath and drink alcohol with somebody. Really. There's no way she's Jewish. Because wine. Well, I mean, if it's a religious thing, I'll do because it. Because wine. Talk me into it. Wait, do they drink on the Sabbath or do they not drink on the Sabbath? Let me see. Right. So on Sabbath morning, men may drink water, tea, or coffee before Shakris, after Brochos. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly. I apologize if not but may not eat and may not drink shahuva beverages, like alcoholic beverages, unless they're required for health purposes. After shakris, one may not eat or drink until after kudush, or kiddush, I'm sorry, after kiddush. I know I pronounced all that wrong. I apologize to my Jewish listeners, but hold on. They're allowed, wait, they're commanded to drink alcohol... Wait, we drink wine both at the beginning and the end of the day, which starts at sundown, and we may have some wine at a morning service or at a bar mitzvah party or any other celebration happening on Sabbath. So I'm not really super sure. Do, you do drink alcohol on the Sabbath. Hang on, I'm trying to figure this out. Damn, where's Coopmaster when you need him? <laughs> yeah, so is she taking medicine with the alcohol too? It appears as though that's what she's doing right now. Did she just take her medicine with the alcohol? I think she did. Wow, dude. Anyways, okay, so I don't know. Somebody in the comments can tell me for sure if you're supposed to drink alcohol on Sabbath or you're not supposed to. I'm not even sure. But yeah, let's keep listening here. And if it's a religious thing, I'll do because it. Because wine? Talk me into it. <laughs> because wine is uh, wine and alcohol is, uh, you know, in moderation. Don't go all crazy cowboy. Always in moderation. Because joy, lifting our spirits, and joy is a great weapon against the Satan, too, because he hates joy. He don't even know what that is. Oh, we got a lot of joy F today. him, F him. Here's the effing Satan. Go to hell, Satan. Yep, go back to whence you came. But here's what people don't know about Satan. Because Dude, she is just straight up unhinged. Oh, Coop Master's here. Okay. Are people supposed to drink on the Sabbath or no? Yes, on Friday night and Saturday night, but not during the day on Saturday. Okay, so I'm. I think that this took place at like, I don't know, two p.m. I'm assuming, sometime in there on Sabbath, on a Saturday. I'm not really sure exactly what time this happened, but something tells me that this is like against the rules. <laughs> something tells me that she's breaking rules left and right here. Okay, she's about to tell us about Satan. Um, F him. Here's the effing Satan. Go to hell, Satan. Yep, go back to whence you came. They're so stupid. Here's what people don't know about Satan because they've been tricked. Okay, they've been tricked. Okay. People. Now give us the, the esoteric Jewish secrets. We're I here. certainly am, my friend. All right. Let me get my sip and this wet man, take my time. lips. <laughs> she doesn't have any esoteric Jewish secrets, quote unquote. Honestly, there are no esoteric Jewish secrets. This is like Kenneth Copeland claiming that there's like a secret like law of the universe that Jews have known about for like millennia, but haven't shared with the outside world. And that's why Jews are rich. And that is if you just give money to God, 
then he will give money back to you. I, and when I say give money to God, I mean give money to Kenneth Copeland, of course. It's just, God, these people are so unhinged. So she, she doesn't have any secrets, and she knows she doesn't. So she's going to take a nice long sip of uh, alcohol here to delay it while she comes up with an explanation or, or some super secret thing that she's going to tell Alex. And asking, you know, asking for connection and the right words. Absolutely. God Almighty created him. Okay, this isn't a Jewish esoteric secret. Just dead silence. Don't let nobody tell you that he's as powerful as God because he ain't and he never will be. Don't let nobody give you that trick. Okay, did, has anybody ever claimed that in the history of ever? Even Satanists don't believe in their, you know, non-theistic belief system that Satan is more powerful than God. Like, they don't believe in any of this stuff anyways, but... No one ever claimed that. What's she even talking about right now? God Almighty created him. Don't let nobody tell you that he's as powerful as God because he ain't and he never will be. Don't let nobody give you that trick because that's a lot of how they control you. You know, all these satanic cults, that's what they tell the kid. No. No. The Satanists don't believe any of this. There are no satanic cults out there. That Satan has got this power and that power and he's this and that and they'll conjure him and he'll come after you if you ever tell and I'm going to make you do this because you're under his spell. Okay, so I guess this is the esoteric Jewish secret she decided to tell. Just queuing on garbage, okay? I got to write this one down, 158. This is crazy, dude. My God. Okay, let's keep listening. That's what they do. That's how they do it. He only has the power we give him. Absolutely correct, but he does have his own power, and he feeds on our fear. He feeds on fear, and uh, he feeds on our hatred towards each other, too. Oh, so you shouldn't be calling people libtards then, right? Earlier, she said that she has a bunch of libtard family members. Her brother is such a libtard that he works at, he's a professor at Berkeley University of California. That's how much of a libtard he is. You know how, you know how else he's a libtard? According to Roseanne, these are her words, by the way, I'm not mine. She says he's such a libtard uh, that he changed her password on the internet so she can only access the internet if he like allows it, basically. Because she was going so completely off the rails with her whole QAnon belief system. That's how much of a libtard her brother is, according to her. And her whole family, they're all libtards, apparently. So anyway, Roseanne can continue on telling us about how she doesn't want to contribute to hate, right? She doesn't want anyone to hate anyone else. She wants to be nice to everybody. Okay, go on. The hate we have for each other. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to straighten all this out for people. Um, but God did create him. And what people don't know is that there is a, he has a reason to exist. And that is he has his followers and his hordes, you know, they've been set loose on people. And what is that for? Because a who do, God has his followers and hordes. Is that what she just said? Oh, please tell me that she said God has followers and hordes. A lot of people here, well, they ain't even people, Alex. A lot of people here, they don't, what looks like people, they don't even have souls. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm no, I don't know what you mean. Oh, I know. They're like apparitions that we create with what, what I believe with our own evil thoughts and deeds, we create an apparition that comes at us. It's called a golem that we create that later turns on us because of the evil thoughts and deeds that we do. We created those people. And Dude, what is she even talking about right now? This is unhinged from reality, seriously. For what it's worth, Rose Anarchy sounds like it would be a really interesting book to read, right? 
But something I've come to find, I, I've made this mistake a couple of times. When I find somebody who has written an absolutely unhinged book, unhinged from reality, complete, confusing, disturbing nonsense, I go into it and I'm like, oh my God, this book's going to be so entertaining, right? I can't wait to read it. And when I actually read it, I come to find that it's just a disjointed, confusing mess. Makes no sense to anybody. Like the sentences that they say, even the words within the sentences, make sense individually. But when put next to each other, mean nothing. They mean nothing at all. It's just garbage. And I discovered that this is actually pretty common, apparently, with, you know, a bunch of unhinged writers. I discovered this primarily through that book, Donald John Trump, The Son of Man, the Christ. That thing made no sense whatsoever. From beginning to end, it was garbage, and it was a struggle to get through. And I don't want to doom myself to reading trash like that again, because that was just miserable, straight up miserable. Uh, so anyways, uh, Rose Anarchy sounds like a really funny and interesting book to read, but I'm hesitant. You know, I don't want to like jump into some trash that's going to make no sense, that's going to betray their complete mental decline. Like it's going to show how completely disconnected from reality they really are. I, I don't want to jump into that. I want to read a book that's like insidious, not disjointed nonsense, you know? J.R.R. Tolkien. Tolkien. Oh, God. He J.R.R. Tolkien wrote the... Uh, oh, my God. It's on the tip of my tongue. He wrote The Hobbit and uh, what's the uh, Return of the King? Oh, my God. I can't remember the name of the series all of a sudden. It's right on the tip of my tongue. Lord of the Rings. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Lord of the Rings. Yeah. God, I could remember the names of the the uh, individual books, but not the actual series. Anyways, yeah. He wrote Lord of the Rings. Okay. A lot of Christians believe Tolkien to be, like, demonic and, you know, Lord of the Rings more specifically to be demonic. He created those people. And J.R.R. Tolkien, Tolkien describes that as Gollum. Exactly. They're telling you. That's our evil side that we've allowed. Right. So Gollum was a character who became obsessed with the ring that makes you invisible, right? And... Wasn't Schmeagol origin originally like the um, the character and then he turned into Gollum? I don't even remember now. It's been a long time since I've read any of that. How to operate. It's in us, too. That's what we don't ever, ever look at. Oh, I, I realize it because I, when I was growing up, I was a nice young child. And then when I became a teenager, um, I never got into actual devil worship, but I, I could definitely start dialing into that energy and dialing into that energy how do you dial into devil worship energy what I, I i i had a lot of power but it was only if i was hurting people and i never really got all the way into it i kind of halfway got into it but i see that was god using my own free will because if i hadn't skated on the edge of that i wouldn't have the understanding of it it's so you can master it and so you can exercise and get it out like it says you know pluck it out it's so you can learn to grow your soul because a soul can grow. Someone who, uh, and, and here's the thing, it, a lot of people don't know if they have a soul. If memory serves, Gollum characters from old Hebrew lore. Is that true? That would be really interesting if true. Uh, not surprising either. Uh, a lot of the time, you know, all, a lot of these old stories, a lot of these books that create these characters and these ideas and tropes and stuff, they're just kind of recycling older ideas. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me at all to find that they recycled Gollum from like another story or whatever. But here's how you know. Can you change? Because only someone with a soul can change. That is so key. We have free will if you have a soul. We're not a robot as the left tells us, you're just a robot. Uh, when does the left say that you're a robot? To whom does anybody ever say you're just a robot? What? No, we're not, because the soul can grow. And people who cannot change, they are messengers. That's the word for them. 
Another word is angels, good and bad. Okay, I thought a bad angel was a demon, right? This is just unhinged stuff, dude. But they're here to tempt the souls to choose which side they're going to go on. That's one way of looking at it, you know? So why is she suddenly got really solemn and quiet? Like she was being rambunctious and uh, what, what are some of the other words that apply here? Um, vivacious and showing real bon vivant a minute ago, right? Some real joie de vivre, if you will. And suddenly she's just super quiet. She's just like solemn and somber and just everything is sad. I'm sad. There are good angels and there are bad angels and the bad angels can't change. And blah, 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 blah. <laughs> What the hell is going on with Roseanne right now for real? I think at an archetypal level, we all know this is a test. What, what, what is your description of this dimension where we are? Is it a purgatory? Is it a test? How would you quantify that? I always wow. Okay. Interesting question. So do we live in a purgatory right now? Is what he's asking. Do we live in purgatory? Okay, go on. Say it's hell. We live in hell right now, okay. This is hell where we came to pay for something we did. Jews don't believe in hell. Jews don't have a concept for hell. Interesting to me that she's bringing up hell right now. Is that right? I, I'm pretty sure Jews don't have a concept for it, right? That's a Christian idea. And as a matter of fact, not only is hell a Christian idea, but like the fiery furnace under the planet where Satan lives and does stuff to people and all that stuff. That is not only a Christian concept, but it's, it was created by a book called Dante's or it was created by a book called divine comedy by Dante. And there is a chapter in there titled Inferno. So I, I mean, is she, referring to that place right now i don't it's all so confusing i think she's completely full of it sheol yeah sheol is a concept for hell i suppose and that's the jewish concept let's see let's look this up let's find out shabbat do jews believe in hell we do believe in a type of hell but not the one found in cartoons and joke books hell is not a punishment in the conventional sense it is in fact the expression of a great kindness the Jewish mystics described a spiritual place called Gehinnom. This is usually translated as hell, but a better translation would be the the super the supernal washing machine, because that's exactly how it works. The way our soul is cleansed in Gehinnom is similar to the way our clothes are cleansed in a washing machine. Put yourself in your sock. Wait. Put yourself in your socks shoes, so to speak. If you were to be thrown into boiling hot water and flung around for half an hour you might start to feel that someone doesn't like you however that the fact that this is the fact that it is only after going through a wash cycle that the socks can be worn again the fact is that it's only after going through the wash cycle that the socks can be worn again okay interesting we don't put our socks in the washing machine to punish them we put them through what seems like a rough and painful procedure only to make them clean and wearable again. The intense heat of the water loosens the dirt and the force of being swirled around shakes it off completely. Far from hurting your socks, you are doing them a favor by putting them through this process. Okay, well, there you go. Maybe her claim about hell or be living in hell or being in hell or whatever, maybe that isn't contradictory to being Jewish currently. Let's keep listening then. But... Oh, let's step back and just listen again here. The level we all know this is a test. What, what, what is your description of this dimension where we are? Is it a purgatory? Is it a test? How would you quantify that? I always say it's hell. This is hell where we came to pay for something we did. That's not a Jewish concept. Came to pay for something we did. The concept of hell within Jewish beliefs is one where you're soul is being clean not a punishment but a correction and you will get to go back to live with god soon or whatever right but we have the sparks of god in us as it says that uh the sparks of soul are within us and we're supposed to set them ablaze we're supposed to make a big ass fire out of them 
That's why our holiest day is called Log Bomer, and it's a day of bonfires, because we're supposed to take those sparks and turn them into fires and let them rage, let them overcome and burn away everything bad. We're supposed to turn this place into heaven on earth because we do have that power. In the okay, that does not sound like the Jewish belief in hell to me. That is my, what I wanted to talk about today. We have the power to make this earth heaven for every child living on it. We have the power, we have the money, we have the resources, we have the intelligence, we have the machinery. Like, she's getting really quiet now. Did she take Ambien? Did she take medicine? Did she, what? What happened? Why was she rambunctious and putting on a, a massive display of joie de vivre five minutes ago, and now she's really, really quiet. This is kind of weird. I, I, I don't understand what's happening right now. We have the intelligence. We have the machinery. We have the hope. We have the desire, and we have the creativity. We have the love. We have everything we need to do it. All we need is to turn on the switch, to plug the plug into the wall. That's We've all got to have the will and, and the free will decision. We just have to know we can do it. We just have to walk over and stick it into the wall and just, like, let there be... I mean, this is... I, I'm not even sure what she's talking about right now, so I can't even say this is partially true, but I, I will say this. It is possible for us to fix a lot of the problems in the world right now. Do you know how much it would cost to, at the very least, alleviate world hunger to resolve a lot of it, it would cost between six and $10 billion to alleviate a massive amount of world hunger. Do you know what our, like, <clears throat> do you know what we spent on the military last year in the United States? We spent about 350 billion on the military last year, 350 billion. So the bottom line here is if we got 15 or if we got 10 percent fewer tanks than we did last year we could solve world hunger or at the very least heavily alleviate it there are so many better things that we could spend money on that would alleviate so many problems in the united states and worldwide and we just don't so i don't know what the hell she's talking about i do know that she's not in favor of diverting military spending to correcting world hunger but you know she's on to something even if she's she has no idea what she's talking about light when you were talking about the void that's what created it the author of everything the creator he said let there be light and then there was no more void and it was good and it was good so what I would say, I agree with you, is this third dimension is a jump point mm -hmm. to decide heaven or hell. That's right. It's heaven to, and it's hell. It is. And you know what? It says that they are not in equal measure because a lot of these religious folk will say there's equal measure. I've heard. Well, that's Illuminati. Oh, the evil's yeah. part of the good and all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But no, as physics teaches us, it's all tipped to the good. Fifth okay. <laughs> physics teaches us this? How does physics teach us anything about this? What? I got to write this one down, too. What is this? Uh, 20340. Hang on. Dude, this is nuts. This is absolutely unhinged stuff. 51%. It's tipped to the good. That's what God... Martin Luther King said that. He said just uh, the universe... Been you know what's funny? She, as physics teaches us, it's tipped to the good, she says. What's funny is that there are slightly more Democrats than there are Republicans in the United States. If she really believes this, then that should tell her something, right? Luther King said that. He said just uh, the universe bends towards justice. It does. It does. Of course, it has. The moral arc of the universe bends toward justice. Obama said that, too. I think he quoted that. Because it wants to keep living. Anything that wants to keep living is tipped to the good. Like but the universe wants to keep living. What? human beings so why do people what is the trick to get people to never be conscious and join evil without knowing it that seems to be the devil's trick because when you actually pull back 
God gives us prosperity and freedom and happiness and family and all these good things. Everything evil gives us is destructive and is, is, is worthless. Why would you even join it? Okay, no one's joining anything. That's the thing. We're all just living our lives, doing our thing, not joining evil. This is a black and white mentality. This is a good versus evil mentality that he seems to have here. If you're not with him, you're against him. If you aren't his very specific brand of evangelical Christian nutcase, then you are a Satanist. Then you work for Satan. It's just nuts, man. Happiness and family, all these good things. Everything evil gives us is destructive and is, is, is worthless. Why would you even join it? People think they have free will, but they don't. What? They just went through this whole thing about how you can change if you have a soul and blah, 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 didn't they? Doesn't this just completely reverse what they just said? Really? You can only order what's on the menu, Alex. That's almost like a Calvinistic view, like predestination. Yeah, you can only get what's on the menu. When you think you can only get what's on the menu, I guess. But I mean, so why did God do that? Because people from this is completely contradictory to what she just said a minute ago. She's just spouting off all manner of nonsense. Just whatever, whatever comes to mind. She says it. Particular families tend to go certain ways. People from evil families tend to go the other way. Sometimes there's different things, but it does seem like it's you have free will, but there, but it's kind of pre-baked into the cake. There's free will, but it's kind of determine that it's like okay you're free will but you're gonna do this no you just get what's on the menu you, you can choose like it says that we have 10 realities that you know our holy books say we have 10 realities that we could choose like you go into a multiplex theater and there's 10 movies playing you can decide which you can use your free will to decide which movie you're going to go see uh there you go so this is her explanation for why she was correct a minute ago and she's correct now simultaneously just absurd nonsense you see what i'm saying choose your own adventure yeah but no i don't see what she's saying is the problem here god made all them movies y you aren't going to choose one that he didn't author I, I mean i totally agree it all works towards god's plan yeah all of it even when we think it's not I think that we were put here to grow and to learn and to develop our skills to be God-like because he, of course, wants us to be infinite beings. I don't believe that he put us here just to die and shrivel up. I Wait, is that a Jewish belief? I don't think that is the idea that you get to live forever eternally. I'm not sure. Maybe it is. I think he wants us to figure out how we can live forever. And I do believe science is on the verge of that now, that we would be immortal. Which, that is just a reflection of how powerful we are, that we can physically hold things together in the third dimension when it's already been done in the higher dimensions. Yeah, and then we can, as Bill Hicks said, travel uh, and, and study space together for all time and forever. We are so beyond this little planet that we're about to ruin, it seems. But... Wow, she seems to accept uh, climate change then? We could, in the blink of an eye, change all that just by deciding to change it. That's all I'm saying. We have the power to change everything. That's true, but there's no political will to correct things, to make health care universal in the United States, create an, an NHS system, that, the likes of which Britain has, for example. There's no political will to correct the college system no political will to fix world hunger correct climate change you know that we could go completely carbon neutral tomorrow that we could erase all coal burning plants all power plants that are not carbon friendly we could erase all of that tomorrow well i mean it would take us a little time of course to build it out but we have the technology right now to do that the technology is where it needs to be. We just had a technological breakthrough about eight years ago in solar and wind power that makes it economically viable and profitable to outfit. We could totally go fully carbon neutral. In fact, be pulling 
you know, carbon out of the atmosphere with what we're doing right now. It just costs money. And as it so happens, we can print that. We can make that money. On top of that, anything that we spend on the climate right now, anything we spend turning our electrical grid over to a carbon neutral setting or whatever, a carbon neutral platform, uh, we get back over the course of 10 years. So it would cost some number of trillions of dollars to outfit, uh, to outfit the entire world in green energy, 100% green energy. And if we did do that, the entire uh, it would pay itself back over the course of 10 years because we're spending so much on health care for people who are suffering because of the fossil fuel burning and repairing these old fossil fuel refineries and stuff when we wouldn't have to do any of that anymore. It would pay itself back over the course of 10 years or so to outfit the whole world. But people don't want to do that. Because if we switched over to completely green energy, there would be a complete power shift in the world. Oil producing companies would no longer have the kind of sway that they have today. So they're putting every penny they have into fighting green energy, basically. With a decision to not do it anymore, to not hold up those structures of Babylon anymore, just to let them fall. I mean, just to let them fall. You know, I ran for president in 2012 and I found out because I wanted to. F what? I didn't hear about this. She ran for president in 2012. Find out how it works, you know. And I did find out that if less than 30 percent of the people vote and I'm not advocating this, but then they have to call an, it not an election. But they never. Okay, I don't know that that's true. That doesn't sound true to me. But she's saying if there's less than 30% turnout, then it's not an election? What? Never tell us that. Well, let me ask you a big picture, which is really the little picture, kind of the five-foot view instead of the 30,000-foot view. What do you expect with, 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 with Ukraine, with, with, with Biden, with, with Trump, just where the world is right now? Because the world is waking up, but are they waking up fast enough and, and, and gut level Roseanne, what do you expect is going to unfold now? This is such an exciting time. Anybody that says they're bored is crazy. I mean, yeah, this... they're crazy. And anybody who says, I'm not into politics, well, politics is into you, so uh, you better wait. Oh, my God. This is a stupid saying that Christians have been saying for a while. I don't believe in God. Well, God believes in you. God, it's so cringy. I can barely say it. It's terrible. Um, I guess she kind of co-opted that saying or, or whatever. God. But uh, it, it could go one of two ways. It could go that, you know, they're, they're so backed against the wall and they're so afraid that their stuff is going to be exposed because it's, I think everything is about not exposing what we already all know. But uh, they don't want the regular people to know what we know. So who knows? They might use an A-bomb. I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, look what they did. Who is they? They might use an atom bomb? What is she even talking about? I don't understand. In Ohio, that's our Chernobyl. I don't know what they're going to do. They could do anything. They certainly don't. So what she's referring to there, look what happened in Ohio. I, if you're watching this five years, years in the future, let me just explain. There was a train derailment in Palestine, Ohio. You may have remembered hearing about this. And the, the media didn't cover it or, uh, immediately when it happened. I've come to find that I, there wasn't a big cover-up, in my opinion. I don't think there's a big cover-up. I think that what happened was the train derailed, which happens. That's actually pretty frequent. This type of thing happens from time to time. In a country of 330 million people, and how many thousands and thousands of trains are there? Of course, there are going to be derailments from time to time, right? This happens everywhere. It's just a matter of statistics. Well, the government comes in and checks around, looks at the situation, says, okay, it's good to go back. And it was just no big deal. Like, that was just the end of the story. Until the people started realizing, holy shit, it, it was not safe to go back. There's a, a serious problem happening here. Like, there are toxic fumes all over the place and 
It's a huge mess. That's when the media started covering it, when they realized that there, it actually probably was not safe to go back in. It wasn't that they were trying to cover this up, the government or anybody else, it seems to me. It was just no one realized, except maybe the government, that it wasn't as bad or that it was worse than it it appeared at first. And that's why it didn't make the media originally. So there wasn't this big conspiracy like she wants to make out. It's just completely made up. Like, don't claim malice where stupidity would suffice as an explanation. You know, maybe they're just fucking idiots. Maybe they're incompetent morons. You ever consider that one? the regular people to know what we know. So who knows? They might use an A-bomb. I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, look what they did in Ohio. That's our Chernobyl. I don't know what they're going to do. They I don't think that was a Chernobyl-level event. Uh, Chernobyl is permanently destroyed. We'll never get better. Uh, it was bad. The chemical is a carcinogen, and we won't see how bad the effects were for years to come, certainly. But it was not Chernobyl level, I don't think. It was terrible, but... They could do anything. They certainly don't care about any of us. I mean, any of them. And so... Who is them? Who is they? I don't understand. What's she talking about? I don't know what they could do, but I do know that we have... a. Uh, a 1% chance of uh, winning, and I know that that's all we need. That's all we need. We have the Dude, she needs mental help badly, really. Somebody, she said earlier, or maybe it was in something else, I don't know. She said her libtard family members took her internet password away. They won't let her on the internet without their permission, basically. And they're going to be miffed she's on Alex Jones. What, what else can you do for her? What else could be done? I don't know. How do you solve this? This is a mess. Each other. That's all we need. And right, let, let, let me step back again. Uh, a 1% chance of uh, winning. And I know that that's all we need. That's all we need. We have each other. That's all we need. And I was going to say how they always talk about love, love, love this, and a lot of people don't even know what love means, but a lot of people have hate. And in my book... You don't say a lot of people have hate, huh? Interesting. Interesting Roseanne would bring that up. This and a lot of people don't even know what love means, but a lot of people have hate. And in my book, I talked about the power of hate... And I all, always had a lot of hate. You was talking, you did too, Alex. But I had this one teacher, and he took me in his house, and he said he, he used to be a hateful person too. He was my rabbi. And he had this dog, and he didn't like his wife's dog. And we were eating steak, and he cut the heart out of the steak. And uh, he called the dog over, he gave it to the dog, and he said, he said, uh, every dog, he said, is the reincarnation of a bad rabbi. And he said, I know who that dog is. That's a, that dog used to be a rabbi that turned me in. And when I give him the heart of the stake, it kills him because I'm so kind. What the hell is she talking about? Dude, she, is that even a real story? What is the heart of a stake? This is just, what? She is, she is gone, dude. She, her mind is shot to shit. She got really quiet out of nowhere, right? About halfway through this interview. She's just like super timid and relaxed. Her joie de vivre is now gone. Did she take medicine a minute ago and is now like just dead inside just her completely numb now or what what happened what is happening i don't understand her xanax kicked in that's what i suspect what the fuck is going on right now i am so confused this is just i think you know the answer to that <laughs> right <laughs> this is just this is some kanye level stuff in, in terms of unhingedness. Yeah, absolutely, Ezzy 2022. Agreed, it is. 
Kanye was more about hating the Jews and and so was probably worse but this is bad this is just her mind is gone she is just gone what happened to Roseanne is is this story real did she really know a rabbi that cut the heart out of a stake whatever the fucking shit that means or is this just completely made up I don't know and he said sorry the heart of the stake it kills him because I'm so kind and he said we all have only one enemy and none of it is each other we only have one enemy and that is the one below the evil one the trickster the snake that guy that's the only enemy we have. And if we would harness all that hate that we've used on each other, if we would take it away from each other and harness it on evil, we could destroy evil in the blink of an eye. All that. Yeah, I think her Xanax kicked in. I think that's why she's super quiet now. That hate we have for the abusers who've put us in jail when we were innocent, who've harmed our children, who've tortured us, who've stolen from us, who've killed our family. All of that hate that we feel and are supposed to, you know. Who did that to Roseanne? What is she talking about here? Listen again. We were innocent, who've harmed our children, who've tortured us, who've stolen from us, who've killed our family. Who did that to Roseanne? The fact that she views things this way is absolutely unhinged from reality. What she's saying is she's saying that like COVID was set up by the deep state intentionally to try to take people out, depopulation effort, so on and so forth, right? Uh, it's all completely made up, 100% made up. But she believes that like the deep state is out to like take out her family members and stuff. This is just nuts, dude. This is just straight up fucking nuts. All of that hate that we feel and are supposed to, you know, drink ourselves to death or drug ourselves to death to deny that we have because we're so loving, which is all BS. If we would focus that. Wait, she said it's all BS. What's BS? Is she saying that loving people is BS or is she saying that drinking yourself is or to death is BS? What? On hating evil and what is done to the children of this world by the... Oh no, is she going to start crying now? Those people who enslave and murder them every day by the thousands and in vampiric satanic acts actually extract and drink their blood as they all like talk about right in front of our faces who's talking about drinking blood right in front of people's faces what are you talking about here okay this is an old claim about jewish people that they drink children's blood and that they eat children and stuff a lot of this came from a document called the protocols of the elders of zion if you haven't heard of this I'm going to insert a short clip. I think it's about eight minutes long. If you have heard of this, just skip forward eight minutes. This explains the origins of what she's saying and where a lot of these conspiracy theories that she's repeating right now came from. So check this out. In 1902, newspapers in Tsarist Russia start publishing this document called The Protocols of the Elders of Zion. They came up with I don't know, like 15 or 18 of them, or I don't remember exactly how many. They claimed that they found these documents on dead Jewish soldiers, and they were like articles that describe how the Jews were going to like accomplish world domination. Now, this is completely made up. It was anti-Semitic propaganda, obviously. There was no dead Jewish soldier. There were no elders of Zion. It was all completely fabricated from the ground up. But it was used to demonize a minority group within the country. And if there's one thing we've learned over the past couple of years even, it's that fascists and extremists love to blame all of their problems 
on minorities. Hitler, when he eventually came around, even reprinted copies of the Protocols of the Elders of Zion and wrote about it in Mein Kampf, like talked about how the Jews are trying to take over and all this other stuff. But in 1923, about 20 years after it came out, it was discovered that the Protocols of the Elders of Zion was actually plagiarized, full-blown, copied and pasted, or the, I guess, the writing version of copied and pasted, <laughs> the, the early 1900s version of copy and paste, straight from a, an 1854 satire book, a French satire book that didn't even mention Jews. It was just straight up plagiarized. 80% of it was plagiarized from this 1854 book, thus putting the final nail in the coffin, proving that this was completely forged. It was fake. It was just propagandistic bullshit created by, you know, anti-Semites to destroy the Jewish community. So that is what the Protocols of the Elders of Zion is. This is actually a copy of it right here. Protocols of the Elders of Zion. Now, it was compiled into a book in 1905 called Protocols of the Meetings of the Learned Elders of Zion. A little bit longer, but yeah, it, it's all fake. It was all completely faked. I'm not exactly sure how many protocols there are. Ten, at least. There may be more than that. Well, anyway, protocols includes things like, uh, just listen to like one or two lines here. In miserable Russia, the Jews are less than 5% of the population, yet they hold over 90% of the official positions. Russians and Jews are very much different, yet Russia is governed by a mere handful of unprincipled Jews. The 95% of Russians have only a 10% say-so about their own government, and even the 10% in office are but lickspittle, or fronts, to the domineering Jews. To the reasoning mind, such a condition of affairs seems impossible, yet the condition exists. In fact, a careful study to the protocols alone will clear up the mystery. Now that you've read that one sentence from the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, a book supposedly discovered on a dead Jewish soldier written by Jews in power, listen to what this televangelist Lance Walna says. He's about to explain Seven Mountains Dominionism, or se the Seven Mountains Mandate, which is the televangelist's plan to take control of the country. I'm not joking. This is from early March 2022. 3% of the population, roughly 3 to 4% of the population, are radical leftist elites. 30% of the population are evangelical born-again Christians that are inclined to go towards Pentecostal language. I mean, we're really out there. 30% against 3%, but they neutralize the church because they're also in religion. They changed the definition of marriage, so they've taken over family. They've totally taken over academia, so the education institutions are teaching leftist theology or leftist ideology and silencing uh, conservatives. They're controlling government right now. They've taken over legacy media, Hollywood, entertainment, and, uh, and arts, and uh, now they've got Wall Street. These are the seven mountains, the seven areas of society that they want to take over to control society in a Christian nationalist state is what he's describing right now. This came straight out of the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, directly lifted from it. Did Lance Walna lift it? I don't know. Somebody did and provided this information to him and he started repeating it. Somebody lifted it directly from Protocols. This is 3%. 30%. Of the, of the population is Christian. How is it that 30% are dominated by 3%? They have a worldview for bringing their kingdom here now. I'm dead serious. This came straight from protocols. Jews are less than 5% of the population, yet hold over 90% of the official positions. Russians and Jews are very much different, yet Russia is governed by a mere handful of unprincipled Jews. I mean, you're seeing similarities, right? There are other similarities. I can't find it at this moment, but there's another part that talks about Jews attempting to spread Darwinism and Marxism through society because they're wonderfully destructive ideologies. They're trying to spread them through society to destroy society. Does this sound familiar? Darwinism, Marxism, saying that they destroy society. The leftists are setting out to destroy it. Seriously. Word for word, the tactics being used on the right at the moment. That's what Protocols of Elders of Zion is. That's what it's all about. That's where a lot of televangelists are getting their ideas from. 
Directly, I don't know. Setting out to deceive, I don't know. Do, are they even aware of this document? I have no idea. But it's copied word for word in some situations, and it's uncanny. Oh, here's another one. The idea that Jews eat babies or that the elites drink adrenochrome from children. That's straight from Protocols of the Elders of Zion. QAnon is nothing more than a rebranded Nazi death cult. Every conspiracy theory you, you can come up with came from this document. The conspiracy theory that Jews eat babies or that they drink the blood of children, that's from Protocols, Protocols of the Elders of Zion. The idea that they control the big banks and the media and all of the other stuff, Protocols of the Elders of Zion. It's from this document right here. The conspiracy theory that they try to cancel people that they don't like, cancel culture, Protocols of the Elders of Zion. It's all from this. The idea that Marxism and Darwinism are evil and that they're trying to use it to destroy society, Protocols of the Elders of Zion. It's all from this. Every conspiracy theory in the past hundred years that you can think of, the Great Replacement, where they're trying to bring in other groups of immigrants to destroy our culture and to outweigh votes and things like that, Protocols of the Elders of Zion. The conspiracy theory that Jewish people are trying to enslave the world or, or whatever other thing, it's all from this book dead serious this is where pretty much all anti-semitism stems from or well i guess that's not exactly accurate this is a compilation of all anti-semitism from the past thousand years it was all put into a book right here and it was passed around nazi germany and get this it was passed around the middle east by the kgb in the 20th century, passed around in Iran and Saudi Arabia and all of the other Middle Eastern countries in that area, Egypt and all of them, by the KGB to make the Middle East hate Israel even more. That's at least part of the reason why Iran absolutely hates Israel and why they're Holocaust deniers. Or, or, or not, not Iran necessarily, but the leadership in Iran. That's why they're like that. Because... The KGB passed these conspiracy theories around over the past hundred years. Thanks, past me. So anyways, yeah, that's the origin of a lot of the conspiracy theories that she's spreading around right now. She probably doesn't even realize that. Just nuts, dude. But we don't hear it because we think it's a fantasy, but it's not a fantasy. No, it is a fantasy. It is. It's a fantasy. This is all completely made up. And I, I honestly cannot believe she fell for this. It should tell you something about her sources, where she goes or who she goes to for information about the world around her. The fact that she can't be trusted now, or I'm sorry, the fact that they can't be trusted. Now, I don't know where she went before. I don't know where she's going now. Supposedly her brother, a Berkeley University professor, took away her internet access. So... Hopefully she's not getting, you know, indoctrinated by this shit anymore. I don't know. But she's spreading it like wildfire still. That's not fantastic. If we would hate that evil with all the hate we have in us, it would go away and we could stop it. And that's what we're here to do is to stop that. And I want you all to, like, just know that we have the power to stop everything horrible on this planet if we just hate it enough and love wait we're supposed to hate now i thought she said we shouldn't hate anymore what the hell is going on right now i don't understand dude this is just wild this is just wild what the fuck is wrong with her this isn't jewish at all no it's fucking insane is what it is She's unhinged from reality. She's fucking gone, okay? Her mind is gone. I don't know what the fuck she's talking about right now. And I want you all to, like, just know that we have the... Oh, by the way, the point behind me mentioning the, uh, the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, the point behind me mentioning it in the first place is to point out that she's repeating anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. 
Does she realize she's doing that? I don't know, but she is. If she's Jewish, she should know better than to repeat these old Jewish tropes. She should know better. Our to stop everything horrible on this planet if we just hated enough and love God and each other enough to figure that out. And I pray we do. That reminds me of the Alexander Schultz and Eason quote. Maybe the crew can print it for me. Oh, how we burn in the camps. Print it off for me and bring it to me. It's a full quote, but he said, if we just would have cared enough and done something early on, we could have stopped it. And for somebody that, you know, your grandmother, I'm, I'm, I'm a father, I've got four children. I love my children so much, and I love my five and a half year old daughter. Well, I hope we can have more, but we probably can. So much, I would die for her immediately. And I could see God in her. I could see the innocence, the purity, the goodness. I think about. You know, this is something that, that many parents discover when they first, you know, become parents in the first place. True love is loving somebody more than you love yourself, willing to die without a second thought, willing to step in front of a car without even considering it for your kid. Saying I love you more than anybody in the world is important, but saying I love you more than I love myself is a new level. That's what Alex Jones is describing. But, you know, Dying for somebody is easy. Living for somebody is the hard part. Purity, the goodness. I think about almost guilty, like I have this child in this evil world, but that's God creating us as well. God gives us examples of what God did. You have free will. God made my daughter. God allowed that, made my son, made my other daughters, who I love so much. And it makes you then put skin in the game and say, because I love my family so much, because I love so much, I need to recognize evil. I need to reject it and say no to it and absolutely defeat it. Th that's what we're here for. And by doing that, we will create heaven on earth as we were put here to do. That's what we're put Because here we're to individuals, do. but we're also a collective in our will. So nobody's going to be commanded by government. Nobody's going to be monitored. We will just recognize evil and won't allow it to happen. That's right. And I, th I wanted to say that the real reason Satan was invented is because in the upper court of God, guess who the prosecuting attorney turns out to be, Alex? Who? Oh. Satan. Okay, so God has a court system now, apparently. There's like a, a court system in heaven. I thought God was the ultimate judge. I didn't think there needed to be a court system. Doesn't God just call the shots because he's all-knowing, all-wise, and all-powerful? Why would they even need a court system? Do things ever happen that God doesn't like in this court system? And why would Satan be a prosecuting attorney in this situation? Prosecuting attorneys are important for the system to function. You know why the court system exists in the first place in the United States? Because we don't have a perfect system. Since we don't have a perfect system, it has to be adversarial. Even if you agree with one side or another, you have to act on this other side of the adversarial system. You have to, because it's an imperfect system. If we had a perfect system, like what God is purported to have, we wouldn't need this adversarial system. Satan wouldn't need to be a prosecutor. What is she even talking about? It's like one delusion to another, just one after the other. It's crazy. She probably needs to be institutionalized. The things that she's saying are complete delusions, all of it. And if she didn't so closely align with conservative ideas and, you know, find herself on the conservative political far right, they would have put her in a mental institution a long time ago for some of the ideas that she's espousing right now. And instead of getting the help that she needs, she's being protected by Alex Jones and others. This is sad.